just doesn't touch your heart. We need to discuss if you got a heart. Let me set this up a little bit for you because this is near and dear to me. See, I'm a cancer patient. A lot of you didn't know that. Yep. I go to Wake Forest University in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. And there's a place called Brenner's Children's Hospital, which treats cancer patients. And Bottomley Enterprises joined and made the 2021 Mayberry Truck Show. Now you say Mayberry. Okay, yeah, that's Mayberry, like Andy Griffith, like Barney Fife with the one bullet. It's in Mount Airy, North Carolina. Now you guys watch because the number that was raised for the children's hospital will blow your mind. And it's actually the heart and the people that put into it and that showed up. So I'm going to shut up. Here you go. Mayberry Truck Show 2021 with the huge heart of Mitchell Bottomley, his family, and so many people. Hey, welcome to America on 18 Wheels. I'm Ingrid Brown, and uh, I'm not sure whether anybody would call me a host, but here you are. You're with us. We're at Bottomley Enterprises in Mount Airy, North Carolina, and I want to bring you the owner, Mitchell Bottomley. Nice to meet you. And Ken, if I say your last name, I'm going to mess it up. So I'm going to let Ken introduce himself. I am Ken Kalen. Thanks, Ken. I, know I, I read it all the time. We want to sit and kind of give you an overview, especially as company drivers, it doesn't matter, owner operators as well, but kind of give you an overview of how Mitchell started this company, how Ken came into it, and all. We did not introduce Cleve. Cleve. And uh, we uh, we just want to kind of want to have a roundtable discussion and uh, give you some information and share with you what's some really cool things that are going on here at Bottomly Enterprises. So let's get going, guys. Who wants to start? Ken. Bring it to us, Ken. So uh, let's see. When, when you think about Bottomly Enterprises, I've been with the company now about two and a half years. Um, I came from a, a mega fleet carrier, and uh, so I was introduced to Mitchell while I was at that carrier, um, selling to their farm freight services for the, for the carrier. And uh, we had an interesting relationship, for sure, um, from a from a uh, company representative to the owner of the company. Um, but full circle around, um, you know, we decided to make the partnership work. Um, and uh, and I tell you, we started with, with my tenure here with fifty trucks, uh, and I was like I said about two, a little over two years ago, and we're to eighty now. And for me, trucks count. Doesn't make a hill of beans, right? Uh, you could have eight thousand trucks. Uh, you could have eight trucks. Uh, it really matters how you treat your people uh, and, and how you're servicing your customers. So, are you being a wise steward of the transportation industry? And so, part of the reason and part of our culture uh, is is making sure that that's coming uh, to fruition. So, uh, we improve the driver experience, and we want to make sure that every customer uh, is delighted. I'm going to ask you something so we can knock this out very early, just in case somebody doesn't go to the watch to the end. Are you hiring? And really quick, how they contact you or how do they reach out to you really fast? What What's the requirements for fast? Yeah, so we are hiring. And I, and I would tell you, if we weren't a growing company, we'd have a very long waiting list. Right? We've been very uh, fortunate uh, to, to make sure that the driver experience has been right here. Uh, and that's a continuous improvement. That never stops uh, evolving, um, but uh, yeah, you can you can contact us through calling us at three three six six seven three three zero five eight. You can go to our website um, at bottomlyenterprises.com. Uh, so those, and you can check us out through any of the social media pages as well: Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, you name it. Um, so TikTok, are all, yeah, all, <laughs> all options, right? Yeah. So if I'm, if I'm not up to date on all of that. Stuff, Forgive me, uh, but that that's it. Was super easy to do a hold of. We have uh, two full time recruiters downstairs that are that are able to talk and at least share uh, what other drivers are experiencing and tell the bottom of the story. So enterprises understands that you know it's it's not a one size fits all. So uh, bringing on and having the opportunity for owner operators to come in, sign on their truck, 
uh, to our MC number, pull our trailers if, if, if possible as well, uh, and share in some of our, our freight characteristics and what that looks like to service our customers. Uh, those are opportunities as well. Um, and then our other side of our company, different company, but bottom line logistics is standalone brokerage, uh, third party logistics company. And so certainly if you have your own MC truck trailer uh, and you're ready to, to haul and especially in, depending on what lanes you're after, uh, some really good opportunities there to make money, have the right characteristics, to keep your truck moving uh, at the same time, enjoy life behind the wheel. We've really gotten into what you do as far as trucking company and getting drivers here. We've gotten into the, your size, that kind of thing. Uh, the facility here, uh, they just opened this brand new facility in 2021. It's been a little over a year ago now. It's absolutely amazing. The driver facilities are just immaculate. Laundry, driver facilities, showers, anything you can think of. Um, the parking is absolutely secure, safe, all that. So let's get past the recruiting side here that we're discussing, and let's get into let's get into the man that uh, bottomly comes from Mitchell. What is it? What is it about Mitchell? Tell us where you tick and where you. How did you get into this? Well, I started as a farmer. Uh, me and my dad started. I actually started doing the Christmas stuff, making Christmas wreaths, uh, Christmas garland. Uh, my daddy always had a dairy, so me and him emerged in 91, no, 93. And we became incorporated with Bottom of Evergreens and Farms. And when we done that, I will, we had to have a truck to move quick. So uh, I've always, I always loved to drive a truck. I've had a CDL since I was 18 year old. Uh, I drive a truck a bunch myself still now. Uh, I love it. Got a passion for trucks. Got a passion for tractors. I mean, I just like to, I like to be equipment man. I don't have an office, a permanent office, nowhere. My office is where every day need me. It's actually my pickup. Uh, I really enjoy doing what we do. I mean, it's a family operated business. It's me, my mom, and my two brothers, uh, and my wife Deanna which is over behind the counter and which is a big part of this five, six year ago, I almost give up and we'll say heck with it and quit it. But then we stuck in with it. I found Ken. Ken is the best thing I ever had. I'll be honest. I, to me, I couldn't have a better person than him. I, we butted heads a little bit when it first started, but I'll tell you now, the man is very smart and uh, works hard, got his heart toward me, toward the company. He's a, he's a company man. He's a great guy to go with it too. And he's a family man. He takes, he really wants to spend time with his family, which is a good thing. And uh, I couldn't do it without him, I'll be honest. Uh, we started logistics, bottom of logistics here a year and a half ago, and that business was started due to my farming side of the business. I let logistics do my transportation on that. So a lot of people think it's because we have these trucks here, thinks, well, you haul your own product. My trucks don't hardly touch my product. Very little of my product they even haul. Uh, we're, de we're dedicated to letting uh, other owner operators or other trucking companies haul my farming stuff. That's why we started logistics. Then when we did, we actually started bringing in other farms, other companies we started doing business with, and that business really took off like a slingshot. I mean, it really has. Mitchell, what are the, what are the things on your farm that other companies haul, or what are the things that you ship on your well, on your farm side? On my farming side, we do a lot of Christmas trees. We'll probably load over seven, 800 loads of Christmas trees probably about 600 loads of wreaths, garland, Christmas decorations. Um, produce, we we'll probably do close to 3,000 loads this year of produce, between pumpkins, cabbage, sweet corn, green beans, broccoli, kale, collard, mustard, turnips, beets, radishes, cilantro, parsley, Italian parsley. Uh, I could probably might have missed two or three of them, but 
That, and then we got cattle. We run sixteen thousand head of beef cattle. We farm a total of thirty, anywhere thirty five to thirty eight thousand acres now, at least land and own land. And uh, it's been a good business for me. I mean, it's just the good Lord has blessed me to have have what I got. And now you've got three that we haven't mentioned or talked about. Yeah, my three boys. Your three boys. Yeah, I got one 24-year-old boy that's actually going today to get his CDO license. Go uh, Hunter. The 20-year-old, he's actually working in the welding shop, and he's getting going to try to now go get his license. And I got my 16-year-old down here in the shop now, and he's actually there learning how to. I've told him to be, if he wants to run a trucking company, you got to learn that thing from the ground up. You start from doing the washing all the way till you work your way up to the very top. Yesterday we were we were uh, sitting at the table eating, and um, Jacob Bonham was sitting there with us and looked over at Connor, which is a sixteen year old, and he said, "What do you want to do? What, what is it? What's your favorite thing, and what do you want to do in the trucking company?" And first thing out of his mouth, and he said, "I want to run it. I want to be him." And it was like everybody, you know, Mitchell and Jacob was like, you got to start with washes and changing wheel seals. And, and it was like he just absorbed all of it. So last night we were getting ready to kind of tie things up. And I looked up and I saw the fuel truck for the reefers going through the parking lot. There's little Connor fueling trucks. And uh, I will say we did forget him to take him to supper. So we had to go back and get him. So but your boys are amazing. But what I see and what I watch of how they literally can step on this farm and what you've taken and thank you for showing me all this and sharing this is between Ken's side and the trucking company, the boys, D, you, and all the people that I've gotten to meet, it comes together as a huge operation in so many eyes and a lot of eyes that look in on it. Mm. And but you break it down to where you make it sizable to anybody's comfortable. They're not a number; they're a name, and that's a really cool thing to me with this. Um, true, true. Here's my thing: I really, really want to get into next, and Betty, you're in on this big time too. How did first off, what happened in September? What did you do in September? Ken, I That's your baby. I, I, I couldn't. I couldn't take. Uh, I couldn't take credit for something like that. So I think it's best introduced by the by the power behind it. Well, in September, you know, I built the show truck back in last winter. I did, and I, I just always wanted to have a, a real nice show truck. So I built this truck. I had uh, bought it off Fitzgerald Peterbilt, and when I bought it off Fitzgerald, I t- I said we need to get it done. I want to have it so we take it to the shows. So I ended up taking it to Davis Brothers, and I took it up there to Tom Bryan and Kevin Johnson. And them boys built me the, one of the most amazing trucks I've ever drove in my life. And I'd say I'm very proud to uh, say I got to drive that thing. And that's actually took me to some shows, and I got to meet other people, made a lot of friends. And there's a lot of people out here really – that really care about driving trucks, really have a big passion for it, you'll meet them at the truck shows. Because them people, I mean, they're like, the truck is in their blood. So when I was there at some of the shows, I said, darn, I'd love to have a show at my place. I I would love to do it. And and when I mentioned it, when I come back here, everybody kind of looked at me, you crazy. They thought it was a bad idea. Did Dee say you were crazy? Yeah, she definitely told me I was crazy. <laughs> and we had this truck show. I said, well, let's go through it. We're going to make, make this thing good. So we ended up going through with it. They, they all supported me. We put a team together. I called Evan about time to shine. He was involved with it, helping me. Tommy Fitzgerald and Brian at Semi Casual. They was a big part of it to help me. Ken jumped on board then. Support me, Chris Fifey, Stephanie, at Diesel Additives, or Diesel Photography. Yeah. And Chad Violet, all of them have stepped in to help me get the thing up and going. So I told them I wanted to have 500 trucks here. 
Uh, they said that ain't going to happen. Then I've had some people say, well, you'll be lucky to get 50 the first year. I said, well, we got to do something to help. I had a boy that was in Brenner Children's Hospital when he was two years old. That's my middle son, Heath, at 20 now. And he had a tumor removed off his head. And I said, if we're going to do something, I need to do something for Brenner's. But in the meantime, this is in July, a girl came up from Fox 8 News, or Chad Tucker did, it's his daughter, from Fox 8 News, uh, come to her place, and his little daughter wanted to ride a truck, she had leukemia. Her name was Roro. And that inspired me more than anything in the world about, you know, trying to help families that need money to help children. Because I've been to our hospital, and I'm going to tell you now, there's a lot of kids in bad shape there that really, really needs help. And it ain't so much the kids. They, a lot of times they don't know what's going on. It's the mom and dad that has got this house mortgage. They got a car payment. They're having to work. They don't have time to spend time with their uh, uh, child. They have to still try to make ends meet while their kids in the hospital. And I said, these ch- children need their mom in the hospital beside them the t- entire time they're there. And I said, if we can raise some money to help that mom spend time there and pay her bills, and let her, let her spend her quality time with that child. That's what I want to do for this money. And it's kind of heart touching to talk about it, but when we've done this thing, I'm going to let Ken step in now. Yeah, so when you're raising money for a charity and, and, you're, and you're, people are putting their hard-earned money in, the, the, what you want to make sure that goes to is is that cause right uh and so when we talked to brenner's about what we wanted to do brenner said hey we have the patient assistance fund and what that does is that goes to support the families of the uh, of the kids that are at brenner's uh so as mitchell alluded to folks that need help with a fuel bill uh or a light bill or hey i need a hotel to stay at things like that to help the family um and so instead of the you know, the parents needing to worry about going to work they can be supported by the patient assistance Assistance fund. Um, so we were just thrown out of our minds when when, when Brenner's presented that opportunity to us. Uh, and so uh, naturally, Mitchell jumped all over and said, "We're all on board, and uh, we're going to raise some money for it." Uh, and to see something go from kind of soup all the way to nuts, right, uh, is is touching, right? Uh, clearly, there's emotion behind it. Uh, but we said, "Hey, let's let's go. Let's give twenty five thousand dollars. Let's let's do this." Let's really get behind it. And so Brenner's was excited. And they're like, that is awesome. That's a major contribution. Uh, so naturally, you've already seen someone who's taken, making wreaths in a basement or started at 18, 16 years old and creating a wreath into a farm, an empire, right, uh, in, in northern North Carolina and Virginia. Well, it's kind of no mistake uh, that uh, the number that we put out for Brenner's uh, and the patient assistance fund uh, was nothing short of, you know, amazing. Uh, a lot like the farm, a lot like the, uh, obviously the entrepreneurial spirit on the couch over here. So uh, that's the exciting part, right? Is where you, you take something for just an idea, something that really was not even thought of in regards to having a truck show and probably at least, and, and admittedly met with some resistance. You know, the last thing a business, a business wants uh, when you're trying to create consistency is a disruption, right? Uh, but what a what a golden opportunity to give to the community, right? Uh, and, and give to everybody. And you think about Brenner's is one of the only places around for this uh, entire area. Uh, so the impact, uh, while sitting in Winston-Salem, the impact is far. Uh, and so well, probably, what, an hour maybe from Winston yeah, from yeah, yeah, area. So just to hour. give you an idea of just how far the hospital reaches and, and into the rural communities where uh, where a lot of that stuff is, uh, it's not mainstream news. I'm a big Wake Forest Baptist Hospital because I'm a cancer patient of the same hospital where Brenner's is from. And that's where I had my throat surgery I've had, and that's where my oncologist is too. So that's kind of how I got into this uh, and heard about the show. I rolled in with a dirty truck, a trailer, and it didn't matter. I mean, I was here because 
what y'all had done with this and what you had brought to Brenner. So, and I, and I picked up Roro because I used to follow her dad before she was diagnosed with leukemia. I didn't know y'all had Roro. I don't know if y'all knew that. I had no clue you had Roro here until the day of the, the presentation and ceremonies on Saturday. And I literally, I think I was standing beside Jacob and Bill Restwich, and I literally felt myself just, it was like, this is a God wink. This is a God wink. So what happened in all of this? So I was doing the thunder here. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so, again, we went we went from a, a $25,000 goal, which at the time seemed like a very big, audacious goal, right? Um, and just through Mitchell's and, uh, experience with the truck show and that circuit that he's kind of been following and, and really interested in, uh, we kind of, you know, by bringing in the people that he talked about, um, and getting everybody's ideas and probably one of the better things that we're good at, right? Is that we, we know we don't know. So we're consciously incompetent uh, about making a truck show. Uh, so we actually brought in all these people that did truck shows, right? And so getting uh, bits and, and stories from everybody and doing an auction for our parade and uh, for, for our convoy, uh, it was nothing short of amazing. So when first place goes for $20,000 uh, to, to, to have the first spot in the, the convoy parade, kind of tells you you're going to break your $25,000 goal. Uh, but that goal was long, uh, that bar was raised a long time ago. So as the momentum of the show built, uh, and we saw, uh, you know, mega show truck after mega show truck sign up and commit to coming. That goal went from 25000 to 250000 which is nothing short of amazing, right? Uh, and then to get everything in total, I think it's only fair uh, to kind of turn it back over to Mitchell and say, hey, we went from, we went from a small goal to, uh, yeah, to first, something like that. The first show we ever had here on the place, I think we ended up having 324 trucks, I think, showed up here. And uh, we raised a total of three hundred fifty-one thousand four hundred and sixty-six dollars, which was very, very impressive. Tore my heart all pieces that day when we did it, and best thing that ever happened to us. What do you suggest, or what's open for next year? What happens to next year? And then we got to talk about the convoy. By the way, we can't drop the convoy. Yeah, so I would say if some is good, more is better, right? So 324 was a heck of a start. Uh, so why can't we get to a, a bigger number there? And I think about, you know, the, the, the shiny trucks and, and, you know, it's one thing to see the shiny trucks. There's a, there's a big passion. That's why the trucks are so shiny, right? It's the passion behind it. Um, but I think about your, your bigger fleet carriers as well and having some opportunity for representation. Right, so uh, you see a lot of trucks going down the road today uh, that are uh, that are honoring our, our our armed services or cancer or some type of disease that they, they have a cause behind or feeding children, whatever that is. Uh, there are opportunities to present those trucks and have the trucks here uh, to be shown. So yeah, if, if you are a company, uh, we would love to hear from you. If you're a driver, one of those companies, we'd love to uh, have you push your company to talk to us and have that truck represented here and, and see that name uh, displayed in, you know, in, in, uh, in symphony with everybody else and their passions and what they do. And there's some one and two and 10 truck fleets that don't have maybe uh, the opportunity to have a complete truck, um, but they're coming to represent a lot of chrome and a lot of real shiny, nice paint. Uh, and they tell the story, right? So sometimes when we don't have the person telling the story for a company, the truck does. So we would love to have that participation. As well. Okay. I will never forget this point in this part. And Miss D, you're in on this. Mm -hmm. When we rolled through Mayberry RFD, as we call it sometimes, but we rolled through Mount Erie on the convoy. And we were downtown, and Mitchell Bottom, we were standing on the corner, and Dee was standing there, and Mitchell was doing this. I don't think I've seen so much excitement, and the streets were literally packed from that curb to the glass. Always so, you started where, you ended where, and how did you put this all together of, uh, law enforcement, fire departments, Why? Mount Airy probably is, no, Mount Airy's never seen something like this. No, I don't they, think North Carolina's seen anything like no, this. No, they haven't. Yeah. 
I told Stan, my safety guy, I said, Stan, he was a sta- he was a DOT officer. I said, Stan, you have to make this happen for me. He says, what's that? I said, have a convoy. I want to go down 89, up Highway 52. I want to come through downtown Mount Airy, hit 52, 601, back to 74, and back to here. He said, they ain't going to accept that. I said, well, I ain't going to accept it if you can't get it. <laughs> I said, I have to have a convoy. I mean, it has to happen. How many miles is that? I'd say it was a total of 25 miles run. Close to 30 if I I had it right. It was close to 30. And it really surprised me how good Evan come here and helped me plan that out about getting the trucks in here and getting them back. And I went to the show in Wapon, Wisconsin, which done a very large convoy, very large. It was a big one. And it was a cluster kind of getting back in and getting back out. But I'll have to say, where I had Evan in here, it's just like his thing just fell right in and fell right. I mean, it just couldn't be no better being the first show. To watch the people of Mount Airy, Mayberry as we call it, line the streets and be there for the convoy and, and the bidding and the just the fun and all the amazing trucks, local and from afar. This is a place that you need to be. This is a place that isn't just a truck show. It's not about the shiniest. It's not about the biggest. It's not about any of that. It's about helping children. And it's about helping others. So, check it out. Mayberry Truck Show 2021. And you can check at Bottomley Enterprises as well. Thank you. Another episode of America on 18 Wheels from my home on the Blue Ridge Mountains of North Carolina, Tennessee. (laughs) Have a great night.